Welcome back to Sights and Optics 101 Part 3. And today, Jason, we're talking about magnification. And I love my magnification. <laughs> you know I do too, Dan. So magnification gives us an advantage in certain competition, target shooting, or hunting situations. And it can definitely be a force multiplier in the tactical world. Yeah, for sure. Magnified optics are used to improve the ease and the effectiveness of aiming by increasing the size of your target image while giving you a specific aiming point using a reticle of some type that can be zeroed to the cartridge and load that you're shooting. That's right. So a small fixed magnification telescope from Crosshair started to show up on rifles around the middle of the 19th century. Marksmen quickly realized that they could make more accurate shots at longer distances using the power of optical lenses and one aiming point instead of two, like you would use when you're using your front and rear sights. Yeah, makes sense, right? Fixed power optics can come in the form of a flip-up magnifier. I've got one back here. You can see it's a Hollow Sun 3X on my AR pistol there. I, it's very handy. I love it. They can also be small prism-type devices. Like on the SCAR there, you see the uh, Trigicon ACOG. That's a prism type magnifier. Mm -hmm. uh, they refract the light to provide that magnification. Usually right. they're a fixed power, uh, varies anywhere from like three to six power uh, on the prism type sites. Um, by the way, and incidentally, the lower power magnification you have, the bigger field of view you're gonna have. And this also applies to standard rifle type scopes and variable scopes as well. And we'll talk about variable here in just right. a minute. So let's talk about some of the terminology. When you're actually looking for magnified optic descriptions, we often see a series of numbers with an X between them. The first number refers to the level of magnification, and the second number, the diameter of the objective lens, which is the lens on the front of the scope. That's right. Usually you see them on the end of the box there, and they'll have numbers. This mm -hmm. box says 5 25 x 56, right. right? So that means uh, the magnification can vary between 5 and 25 power, and 56 refers to this objective lens. The bigger the objective lens that you have, the more light it can capture and give you a brighter image of your target also. Yep. So when there are multiple numbers in the beginning of the scope description, like three to nine by 40, that means the magnification is variable. In other words, you can adjust it from three all the way up to nine or anywhere in between. And the 40 means it had a 40 millimeter objective lens. By the way, variable scopes are a nice option when shooting at multiple distances, but tend to be more expensive than fixed power scopes because they're a little bit more complex to make. Yeah, let's talk about some other terms while we're at it here. We told you about the objective lens, the big part on the front of the scope here. The ocular lens is the one closest to your eye, and of course that's going to be on the rear portion of the scope in the eyepiece here. I'm pointing at it here on this Vortex Strike Eagle. The middle is the uh, body of the scope. We have a focus ring, which is the ring right here uh -huh. on the eyepiece, and that does exactly what it sounds like. It gives you a focus because we're all a little different, right? Um, also, we have a power ring, and that's the big ring here. And when we talked about variable optics just a minute ago, when you were describing that, this is what you vary that magnification with by turning this, uh, this ring. It bottoms out at the lowest power, and it tops out at, at the uh, highest power. These are the turrets. The, this, these are what we use to uh, change the elevation and the windage of the scope. Sometimes they unscrew and come off. These are pretty cool because they just pop up. You make your adjustments, you hear the little clicks lock it back in. and lock it back down by pushing it back down. Pretty cool. Yep. Most of these terms, by the way, we can also apply to sometimes to the flip up magnifiers right. and the prism scopes yep. as well. So some scopes have a parallax adjustment, which can be on a side turret or an adjustment made with the objective belt. That's right, let's talk about parallax for a minute. This has a parallax adjustment on the side, mm -hmm. like you just spoke about, which is pretty cool. But what is parallax? So parallax really uh, makes things sort of out of focus. So sometimes the target is clear when you're looking through the scope and the reticle may mm -hmm. not be clear, or the reticle might seem to shift a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right if you move your head slightly through the scope. The parallax actually helps to clear that up and give you a better picture of the reticle and the target as well. There's a little bit more to it than that, but we want to give you a simple explanation, right? We could probably go a little deeper on this subject. Another hey, video. a new video maybe. <laughs> maybe we'll knock out another yeah. one. There's definitely a lot of information to cover here, but let's continue with some more scope terminology. 
So LPVOs, this is a term you'll hear me and Denny use quite often as we use on a regular basis on both of our competition rifles. Yeah, we've got a bunch of them here. Here's an LPVO. I've got an LPVO on my AR back here. I've even got one on my CVA uh, single shot blackout That's rifle, which is one gun. of my favorite right. rifles. But you know, I figure one to six comes in perfect for that little 300 blackout cartridge. Right. And I really like them. The magnification usually tops out on LPVOs at six or eight, but I've seen some one to 10 versions out there as well. And an LPVO is the best of both worlds, right. basically. If you turn it all the way down to the number one setting, uh, it'll give you a big field of view. Often we have an illuminated reticle, so it's almost like shooting through a red dot. Right. But you have that capability of quickly changing that magnification for longer shots. Uh, and um, for instance, I keep referring to my Vortex Strike Hill. It's one of my favorite right. LPVOs, but we got some other really nice ones. Here's an AccuFire 1 to 8, for instance, which is really cool. We have a right on version here as well. Yep. So many LPVOs have a BDC, or bullet drop compensator type reticle, which has a series of hash marks, dots, or circles for bullet drop holdovers. Many of them are calibrated for common rifle loads, so they're really simple to use. Simply by knowing your distance and holding on the appropriate part of the reticle for the shot. Yep. Now, since we're on the subject of reticles, let's talk about some of the other types of reticles. The most basic reticle, we call it the duplex. Mm -hmm. It's basically just a crosshair. Sometimes in a duplex, you have a thick part that narrows down into a thinner part. That's the real simplest uh, form of crosshair, right. of reticle, I should say. There are a lot of reticles that are a simple dot. Some look like a Christmas tree, and others look like a horseshoe, to name a few. You've also got nil dot reticles, yep. which are designed for ranging and holdovers. They look like a crosshair reticle with a series of dots on the elevation and windage lines. That's right. Now we're going to talk about numbers. Got your calculator handy? Again? No, I'm going to keep it kind of simple though, really. But we got to talk about this terminology, right? We want to educate, and I've been educated just researching for this. The mill dot or mill mm -hmm. equals 3.6 inches at 100 yards or 10 centimeters at 100 meters. That gives you a little understanding of right. how much that dot covers at a certain distance, right? Because we're actually using it to aim with. You'll also hear terms MOA when we're talking about scopes and distance calculation. MOA stands for minute of angle. So one MOA equals approximately, approximately, not exactly, one inch at 100 yards. Mm -hmm. Exactly 1.04 inches. Are you taking notes? I'm <laughs> We can get into Locking a whole other piece on that as well. Maybe we even got another video on the way on that. <laughs> yeah. So another common question we get is, what is the difference between first and second focal plane scopes? Yep. In first focal plane scopes, the reticle inside of the scope is closer to the front of the scope body. When you adjust the zoom in these type of scopes, the reticle increases in size proportional to the target. These types of scopes tend to be more expensive due to the manufacturing process, but they have excellent ranging and optic qualities. Yeah, now second focal plane scope reticles remain the same size during that zoom process. They don't have the, quite the same ranging qualities as the first focal plane scopes, but they tend to be a little more economical. Uh, they're a little easier to produce. Now, if you're trying to decide between these two and money isn't necessarily a factor, my advice is to go with a second focal plane scope. Uh, if you plan on using that center crosshair and your elevation turret to make those distance corrections. However, if you're using a BDC, like mm -hmm. you talked about, yep. or a mill dot reticle, a first focal plane scope is probably going to serve you a little bit better. That's right. So there are a lot of things to consider and keep in mind when choosing the right device for your magnification needs when it comes to shooting. Exactly. Yeah, we hope you learned a thing or two about magnified optics. I know I have. Yes, indeed. So thanks for watching and be sure to hit all those important buttons, like, subscribe, comment, share and help that 2A algorithm. That's right. Get out there and enjoy your Second Amendment rights, guys. Shoot straight and stay safe.